Hey everyone, BoxBrain here. I'm making a medieval fantasy sandbox action RPG game called Goblin Menace, uh, where the initial focus is on building your own army of NPC characters to help you fight hordes of goblin creatures. Um, last week, I showed a tutorial on how you can create these shake animations for both the apples and the enemy arrows when they hit the ground. Um, so this week I'm going to focus on the bounce animation. So whenever the apple falls from the tree, it's going to do a little bounce. Uh, similarly, uh, when the goblins get uh, become defeated, they uh, drop a coin as well. And the coin also does a little bit of a bounce when they initially drop. So let's just show how that looks like. Um, so I've uh, used a... Uh, 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 an approach where I create uh, an animation node um, that essentially creates its own sequence of tweens to be able to execute this bounce animation. Uh, and the reason why I went with this approach is that it allows you to have a scene widget, a, a node that is modular, composable, and very easy to use. Uh, essentially, you can drag and drop that animation node underneath any object that you want to animate. Uh, and with very few actions, you'll start to um, work and start to, you know, be able to play that animation with itself. Uh, so let's take a look at how that works inside the editor, how we can make use of uh, such a scene widget. Uh, so the scene widget I'm talking about is this bounce tween node. Um, so the node type itself is actually not a tween, it's just a regular node. Um, but inside the bounce tween node, it creates a sequence of tween nodes uh, that would execute that bounce animation. Um, I'm going to do a deep dive on how the code works and how you can create this widget for yourself. But first, I'm just going to show how you can actually use this uh, widget uh, in your own scenes. So uh, I've created a demo here just to illustrate how this works and the kind of scene we're going to build together today. Um, so let's run this. Uh, so I've set it up so that, um, let me just zoom in a little bit here, uh, so that whenever the player walks into the coins area, it's going to make it bounce, or if the player swings their sword, uh, it's going to also trigger that bounce animation. Uh, so that's the scene that we're going to build together today. All right, so let's create a brand new scene together. Um, so we're going to create a tutorial scene. Uh, let's call it bounce tutorial and let's create a world node i'm just going to start to populate all of the kind of basic elements to get a working scene going um, and then we'll put in a player character we'll give it a camera 2d uh, and then we'll also attach a script to get the camera to be able to zoom uh, so I'll put up a link for a tutorial I made earlier on how you can create your own zooming camera um, where you can just attach the script to any camera nodes and allow you to be able to zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. Uh, and then let's add in a color rectangle for the background uh, just so that we have a world background we can move against. Background and let's pick a color for that nice green color that's not bad all right make it a little bit bigger and then we'll create an object to represent the coin that we're going to animate so we're going to go with a static body 2d um, and then we'll give it a sprite node animated sprite so that we can have a spinning coin animation um, uh, let's create a bunch of new sprite uh, sprite frames and then we'll give it this um, coin pixel art um, PNG image um, and so to set this up we'll set four, eight uh, frames horizontally one vertically select all the frames and create the animated coin all right so let's test this and run this so we should have now a player character we can zoom in a bit um, with a coin that is animated. Uh, let's make sure it is in fact animated. Um, let's see here. It's 
Looping. Play. Okay. Now it's animated. Perfect. So that's working. Um, and then let's give it uh, area 2D so that we have something to trigger the animation with. Uh, give it a collision shape. Um, we'll give it a circle shape. Make the circle radius 4 to match the coin pixel art. And then finally, we'll uh, add in this uh, animation scene widget, which is the bounce tween. Great. Um, all right. So now we'll connect the signals. So one for body entered. Oh, uh, and let's rename this to coin. And let's also attach a script to it. So we'll call this uh, not shake bounce tutorial coin. Delete everything, and let's start connecting the signal. So we'll have one for body entered, and let's do another one for area entered. Okay, so for body entered, um, we'll just call the shake uh, bounce uh, animation whenever anybody enters. So just do bounce tween dot start. Uh, and then for area entered, we'll check if the area is a hitbox. Uh, then we'll do the same thing. We'll call the animation. Um, and then the widget that we're going to make together has uh, a few options that you can play around with. So uh, one is whether this um, uh, node is this animation is single use or repeated use. If it's single use, then it will actually delete itself after it's finished. Uh, so we're We'll uncheck that and make it repeated use. Um, you can actually start the bounce at the very top of where the coin is first dropped rather than at the bottom. So that's an option there. And then we'll also give it a, a drop height. So by default, it's 20. And that's a nice gentle bounce. But uh, for this uh, demo, we're going to make it a little bit more pronounced. So we'll set that to 40. Um, and that should um, be it. I think that should all be working now. Let's give it a try. Um, zoom in a little bit. All right, so that's working. Uh, so you can walk into the coin or hit it with your sword, and that's going to trigger the bounce animation. Okay, so now let's do a um, deeper dive into how this um, scene widget works by taking a look at the code. Uh, the scene itself is only a single node. Um, any sub nodes are created programmatically on the fly by creating tweens. Um, but here's the code for it. Um, so the only dependency, once again, is to make sure that there is a sprite for this tween to animate. Um, if, if it cannot find a sprite node, it's fine. It's, um, you know, it's, it's not going to break immediately. Uh, uh, and that's nice because it allows you to compose this animation into another animation. So let's say you have a bounce and a row animation combined together. Um, so you can uh, put these uh, animation nodes as children of that uh, parent animation node uh, and have that control everything and set uh, who the where the whole sprite should be. So um, this design allows you to compose these animation nodes together into each other. Um, but where this host sprite is assigned is in this ready function here. So it's going to first look for a sprite node. Uh, fading that, it's going to look for an animated sprite node. So either one uh, would work. Um, it's got a, a, a few options and parameters. Options meaning like um, kind of like, you know, things that you can change um, for each individual bounce tween animation. It's kind of external facing. Parameters are sort of like internal parameters that you can also customize to govern how the animation behaves, um, but that are more global and not specific to each individual animation. Um, so the options we talked about earlier, that includes like the drop height, which determines like how much energy there is at the initial bounce, uh, whether we start the bounce at the top or at the bottom, uh, whether it's single use or repeated use. For parameters, um, there is a duration for each individual tween. Uh, so that's by default set to 0 0.1, but you can change if you want a more you know, longer lasting bounce, you can change how long uh, those bounce animations last. 
Uh, and then there's a recovery factor, which is how much of that initial energy is retained on each subsequent bounce. Um, so it loses half of its energy or half of its height uh, with each bounce. Um, all right, so let's collapse all the functions and just see the structure of this code here. So uh, the only public facing method is just the start animation method here. Uh, and then it has two helper methods for when uh, for creating an uh, animation tween to bounce up, like to move up, and then another tween for getting the coin to drop back down. Um, and in the start, uh, this is kind of like the controller method. Um, the first thing it's going to do is you can actually pass it a parameter, a, a sprite, uh, and it's going to set the sprite as the host sprite. Um, so that's something you can call on the fly as well without defining the host sprite up front. Um, that just makes the method a little bit more robust. Um, so if we are starting at the top, if that option is checked, um, then it's going to uh, start by dropping the coin down from that initial height. Um, and then it's going to do a series of animation cycles and each cycles involve a bounce up animation and a drop down animation. Um, so it's going to keep doing that until it reaches a stopping threshold and here that's just set to one. Um, and so with each cycle, the bounce height gets reduced uh, by the recovery factor. Uh, and so it's just going to bounce quite a bit and then bounce less, bounce less until it reaches a threshold and then it's going to stop bouncing altogether. Um, and then if this is a single use animation, then we're going to delete it at the end uh, after the animation has completed. Uh, we've also defined a signal here for uh, the animation being completed, uh, just to kind of match the same style as the built in tween nodes for Godot. Uh, the bounce up and drop down uh, helper methods are very similar to each other. Um, so they involved uh, a parameter for the height to which you want to bounce up to. Um, and then we just invert it because uh, the final y position is actually going to be a negative version of that height. The height is an absolute value. It's uh, you know something is like it's kind of a conceptual measure like it's 10 pixels high. Uh, but the position we want to move the object into is actually going to be in the negative y axis. Um, and then you create the tween. So we have a utility function for creating the tween, uh, which is also very simple. Um, let's search that up. So um, basically, it just uh, creates a new instance of a tween and it adds it as a child of whatever parent node you give this method. Um, in this case, we just set the parent to be the self, uh, which is just the current um, bounce uh, animation node. Uh, so you create a new tween, you place it as a child, and then you add in the, you define the uh, property interpolation uh, for position Y, starting at zero, which is the bottom, and then going up to the bounce height. Um, and then I set the transition type to be uh, quadratic uh, with uh, ease out. So that means it's going to um, start out quickly at the as it's moving up in uh, from below from the bottom and then start to slow down once it reaches that bounce height up at the top right to kind of mimic how real physics and gravity work uh, and then we run it and then we return the tween so that we can yield wait for it to finish and then delete it after it's done before starting on the next tween which is the drop down the drop down helper methods does something very similar um, also inverts the height, creates the tween, interpolates the property, but this time it's starting at the top, uh, at the height, uh, and then dropping down to zero, uh, and then using an ease-in um, animation type where uh, it starts slow and then start to accelerate as it gets uh, falls down. Um, and so that's pretty much it with the code. You can pause parts of this video and try to recreate this animation node yourself. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you can leave your questions in the comments below or join my Discord channel where I, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions more specifically and more in depth. Um, so yeah, overall, this is a tutorial for how you can create a bounce animation. It can be applied to a variety of objects, whether that's a coin, an apple, or anything else you want to bounce. Um, and it's designed to be modular and composable. Hope you found it helpful.